This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. It's Alex Bennett, and it is The Ramble. And uh, The Ramble goes on from now until midnight, uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Or is it still daylight? No, we're, we're through at daylight. We're now standard time. It snuck by me. That's what happens when you're not working. It sneaks by you. Uh, but I, uh, uh, I, we're, we're here, and we're here until midnight. And we're on the east coast of the United States. We do our show from New York City, New York. In case uh, anybody wonders, uh, in fact, th- this is the only program we have that comes from New York. Uh, Connections comes from Florida. Uh, Dom- uh, Damien is all the way out there in uh, Petaluma. Well, he's now in Santa Rosa. Oh, boy, what a time to move to Santa Rosa. And, um, uh, of course, our uh, our show, The uh, Intersection, uh, that's, uh, that's over there in, uh, in Texas, right? in the northern part of the state. So uh, it's our, our lineup comes from all over the country. And by the way, you know, uh, why don't I just put this out there? I'm, I'm looking for shows to add to our, our slate. Uh, not that I need any more work to do in posting shows and things like that. I may have to change some of the, some of the workload that I do. But if there's anybody out there that feels they want to do a program, there are a couple of things you probably should have. Number one, a microphone, okay? If you've got a microphone, uh, that's a good beginning. It would be good if you got yourself a control board like one I have here. You can't see it right now, Uh, but um, we have a control board here, and that control board um, allows you to have a couple of different inputs such as the audio from Skype, okay? And then you got to have Skype installed in your machine. You need a PC or a a Mac. PC is uh, the simple way to do it. And uh, if you've got those things, a little kind of a small mixer, you can find a small mixer for $100, and you feel that you can do a show. You might even already have a studio in your home. You may be an amateur. You may be a podcaster or whatever, and you would like to do something, and it's four days a week that you got to do the show. It doesn't pay anything, but we do ask that people do shows four days a week. The only person that we haven't had do a show four days a week is the uh, sports show with uh, the franchise MC. He does it once a week, and I did that because he was a friend of Damien's, and Damien wanted to put the show on, so I said, sure, why not? And it's it's a good little sports show, but here's the problem with him doing one day a week, and if he's listening, I hope he listens to this lecture. You do a show one day a week, and, and you do not get an audience, okay? You're, you're just pretty well playing to thin air, and maybe a couple of people will hear you on the repeats, but basically you won't have time to build an audience, because if you're only on once a week, they got to remember what day you're on, what time you're on, and whatever. If you go on every night at the same time, that's eh, a whole different story, all right? And it's a whole different uh, ball of wax, as it were. Uh, so anyway, if you'd like to do a show and you think you got what it takes, send me some kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, sample of what you want to do, or send me a proposal. Now, uh, you're saying, well, I'm not a broadcast professional. And here, uh, Alex Bennett is going to decide whether I'm going to be on the air, and he's a broadcast professional. And my answer to you on that one is, fuck that. I, I, if I can get somebody who has no concept of how broadcasting is done and just wants to do a show and has a whole different way of doing it because they come at it from a different direction, I've always fostered that as being a good thing, not a bad thing. So if you are interested... You can go to gabnet.net. There's a little thing down that says contact us. You can click on contact us, and anybody else who wants to write us can click on that too. Uh, contact us and send us a quick email, and uh, we'll get back to you, and we'll find out what you, what you, what you propose. Now, that's, this is not an open thing that everybody that says they want to do a show is going to get one. Um, that's pretty much the Internet. Uh, but uh, if you would like to be on what is a somewhat of a structured network and you feel like you could do a show every day and I'd like at least an hour 
uh, I, you know, Damien does a half hour. If, if, if you're good enough, I'll let you go with a half hour. But an hour is, I just, you know, I, I think that Damien does a great job, and I love his show, uh, but it's way too short. For my for my thinking, you know, because I I would I think there there's more that he could do, uh, but uh, he's got he ha does have a full time job, and so that you know some of you may just have a full time job and can only do a half hour. I will entertain that thought, okay? But just let me know, you know. I mean, it's it's up to you whether you want to um, whether you want to do it or not. But I have, uh, uh, I, I've decided for a while that I would like to put out the feelers there for people who might want to become part of GabNet, okay? You may already be doing a podcast and you want a larger audience for it and you want it live. Uh, you know, I mean, the shows originally go out live and then we put them in rotation on the, on the uh, web, on the uh, internet. Uh, in our 24-7 feed. The audio feed that people are getting right now from me is the same feed where you hear the 24-7 feed. And uh, that's a good thing. Uh, so, um, you know, it's up to you. I would love to hear from some of you if any of you are interested. Uh, if you'd like to hear more shows and new shows and stuff like that here, send us a smiley face right now. Just so we can know that a lot of people feel that they would love to see us do more uh, programming than uh, we're already doing. Let me see here. I got a couple of things I got to fix here for a second. I thought I would just talk tonight. I figured, what the hell, you know? I haven't. I, I started doing it about a week ago, and I found that after a while, as I'm doing it, um, we we start getting a decent sized audience uh, watching it. So uh, I'm I'm doing it. However, if I find that people are getting too used to it and they're not doing that, like right now we don't have a lot of people there. Uh, but uh, who knows? You know, people will join us as we go along. Anyway, uh, what do I have to talk about? You know, I, I've been watching this thing that they had on HBO, Rolling Stone. Uh, 50 year, it's the 50-year anniversary of Rolling Stone magazine. God, does that make the rest of us feel really old and old, uh, I got to realize that when that magazine first came out, uh, let's see here, I guess I was, ooh, wow, 27 years old when Rolling Stone first came out. And that's 50 years ago. And when I think about 50 years ago, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing, folks. I got to tell you how life creeps up on you. You, uh, one day you're sitting there 27 years old going, wow, what, I wonder what it'd be like to be old. Well, I got a long way to go on that one. The next time you blink, you're 77 years old, you know, and you go, where the fuck did all that time go? You know, where, where, where all the adventures I had and all the things I did. And yet they, when I look back at it, they've gone by so fast because 27, 50 years ago, I picked up my first uh, copy of Rolling Stone magazine. And that's kind of scary. That's scary. That makes you wonder, yeah, you know, what, what, what is life really about? It goes by so fast. So let me just tell all of you who are younger than I am, don't waste a minute of it. You know, I'm lucky. I'm still alive. There are a lot of people who go well, well before 70 years of age. And, uh, uh, you know, and so I'm saying to you, uh, realize that life goes by very slowly, but it uh, at the end it looks like it went by awfully fast. That's the only thing I can say to you. I mean, it makes I know it makes no sense, uh, and and it's not exactly a piece of wisdom I'm passing on to you that you're going to be able to use. But I'm just saying, live your life, enjoy it. You know, when I look back, you know what. I don't think I've had a phenomenal life, but when I look back and I think about the stories I tell, I suddenly realize that I was blessed with a much more phenomenal life than most other people. Um, you know, I think about the people I've met, the places I've gone, the things I've seen. You know, what's terrible about my life now is that at 77, when you kind of are disappearing in the eyes of people. In other words, 
you know, if I walk out on the street at my age and there's a beautiful woman walking towards me, I'm not going to get the glance I used to get, you know. Uh, I'm invisible, basically, to most people who are younger than I am. And so, therefore, I'm also invisible to a business that I worked in for, well, let's see here. How many years is it now? I started at 14, so that would have to be about 63 years ago I started in radio. And uh, I have stayed in radio. It, 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 for the most part, it has been my mistress. Um, there are a few periods in my life where I took some time off. Uh, when I was doing Midnight Blue, I was doing it while I was still doing radio, but then I got fired from the radio, but I kept doing the Midnight Blue, all right? Uh, there were some times when I, uh, when I wasn't working. Uh, there was a period about three, four years where I... I held down various jobs, but I wasn't I wasn't working radio basically every day. Uh, you know, I did uh, play TV, which was the first internet television broadcast network, and things like that, and and that was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but I did wasn't working during that period of time. But for the most part, for those sixty three years, I've been largely working in this business. Uh, and so I look back at it and I go, you know, I'm very, I'm very lucky that even though I was finally forced out of it at, at like 73, okay, uh, I lasted in this business a lot longer than most people last in it. I mean, the average lifespan of a radio guy is probably, you know, at best five, ten years, something like that. And then they're on to something else, selling real estate or uh, maybe they find something else to do with their lives. Got a guy, my good friend, uh, you know, Rob Alfano, who's the voice of Gabnet. Um, he worked radio, and he was a, a television guy as well, having worked for Court TV and so on. And then one day he just said, you know, I see the way this is going, and I can't make a big living out of this, so I'm going to go into computers. And now he's working uh, for a major computer company. But he didn't stay in radio. And there isn't a lot to stay in radio for. You know, since uh, 2008, I was told by my good friend, Walter Sabo, who is a radio consultant, although that's a term that's kind of an ancient term because I don't think there's a business for radio consultants anymore, that there have been 60,000 jobs in the radio business lost since 2008, Okay. And where does that all go back to? You know, tonight they were, I was, as I say, I was watching this Rolling Stone retrospective, and it's, it's like stories from Rolling Stone. It's about the stories they did, and then a brief uh, uh, capsule, uh, encapsulated little documentary on each of these people. Like Jimmy Swaggart was a good example of one of them, and another one was Bill Clinton. And when the Bill Clinton was playing, I looked over at Girlfriend, and I went, you know, if you really think about it, he was a shitty president. And, uh, uh, she, you know, she said, yeah, I guess he wasn't that good. You know, uh, at the time, I guess I thought he was a good president because the economy was booming, at least in my sector, okay? But right towards the very end, the last year of his time in office, Silicon Valley went under. And I remember that because I was finally, had, I had... Uh, left a radio station, uh, and I went to do Play TV, and then after Play TV started to fold, because it was one of the first companies that crashed, I went to work for CNET. And CNET considered themselves kind of like the, uh, the news source for, com for the computer business, okay? And I saw this whole collapse of, of the computer industry, of Silicon Valley, of all that went on in Silicon Valley, just tank, just go go south, all right? And um, uh, I saw, it, it, and all of this happened under Clinton's watch. So if we say, hey, you know, the economy was doing great guns, you got to remember that big crash happened in the last year of his presidency. Um, and it was, it, a lot of it was due to overzealousness of people and 
and saying that, you know, we can sell, hey, we can sell dog food on the internet. Boom, uh, they do a, a, a IPO. Uh, all of a sudden, the people who are selling dog food are billionaires overnight, right? And of course, there's no business there because your dog isn't going to wait for his fucking food, right? Dog wants it now. Cat wants his cat litter. Now he has to pee somewhere. You know, so Pet.com was a lousy idea, and they sold more hand puppets of that puppet they used on the ads on TV than they did actual product. So it, it was that hubris, and it was all of that false economy that was created under Clinton that, uh, that really, you know, killed, the, the, killed Silicon Valley. It died under his watch. You know what else died under his watch? My business, radio. He signed a telecommunications act that deregulated radio. Now, up until a certain point, people were allowed to only own seven radio stations. Uh, well, seven AM, seven FM, and I think it was five TV, or it might have been also seven TV stations. And beyond that, they couldn't own any more than that. And sometimes... Uh, they would have uh, all three in one market, uh, but you couldn't do that and, I think, own a newspaper at the same time. Because if you owned a newspaper, that would be too much of a media conglomerate, uh, you know, uh, media glut of one company in a, in a marketplace. So if you, you could have two radio stations and a newspaper, or you could have a TV station and a newspaper, but you couldn't have two radio stations, AM and an FM, and you couldn't have the... Uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, newspaper on top of it. You couldn't have the TV station on top of it. So uh, he then signed the Telecommunications Act, and what he thought he was doing was deregulating a lot of things with the phone companies and things like that. But he was also deregulating radio, allowing radio stations or radio ownerships to buy as many stations as they could eat. It was an all-you-can-eat buffet of radio stations. And companies started buying these up like crazy. And all of a sudden, there became this, uh, this uh, what can we call this, co cohesion of radio stations where you had somebody like, uh, like uh, what was the name of the company? Uh, Clear Channel, who wound up owning close to 1,200 radio stations from coast to coast, most of which they couldn't afford the debt load on that. And... Uh, this meant that they had to economize, and how they economized was by doing things like voice tracking, where they would hire me, Alex Bennett, to be a disc jockey in New York City, and then when I got off the air, I would voice track a show, which was then sent out to other radio stations. It was just, it wasn't the music, it was just the voice part of it. Hi, it's Alex Bennett, now here's, uh, you know, uh, Elvis Costello. Um and, uh, you know, Rob, if he comes on and I could tell us about voice tracking, because I think he had to do that very, that very thing. And voice tracking then meant that all of a sudden they could start firing people all over the place and, and not own, uh, have, to, have to have that debt load of people to pay. So that was one thing that killed radio. The other thing that killed radio was syndication, because now they had like seven programs that were syndicated and they were everywhere. And in each of those markets, one less person had to be hired for each shift that was being covered by a syndicated show. And I'll tell you something. I, I blame a little bit of that on my union. My union is AFTRA, uh, SAG AFTRA, after, SAG AFTRA. Yeah, they put SAG first. Um, and AFTRA is the um, uh, uh, American Federation of Radio and Television Artists, or Television and Radio Artists, AFTRA. I always put radio first because radio is first in my heart. And um, my union didn't see this coming. And they didn't say, hey, look, you want to do uh, voice tracking? That's fine. But you have to have a paid person who's in the union. What, they should have said this at all the union stations. A paid person at that station sitting there while the tape is being played. Or, another example, uh, syndicated programs. Here comes Rush Limbaugh's show. Great. You can have the Rush Limbaugh's show, but this is a union station, and he, even though he's coming from another city, you, excuse me for scratching my nose, but my nose gets very itchy. when uh, It always did when I was doing radio. Uh, 
and, and now you can see it, you know. Uh, anyway, um, so um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so, it, you know, they, they, they should have said you have to have somebody in the studio while the syndicated show is being played. I'll tell you where this happened that I saw that a union station put its foot down. And that was in Chicago. When I went to work in Chicago, I was a disc jockey there, WIND in Chicago. And I, uh, <laughs> I, I sit down in the, uh, in the studio, and they tell me how it's done. And there's a guy standing over to the right of me with two turntables and a music stand. And I said, well, who's that? And they said, that's the musician. I said, what? He said, yeah, that's a musician. The musician plays the music, and then over there behind the glass is your engineer, and he plays all the commercials and stuff like that. And I went, wow, how did this ever happen? Because I'd never been I'd, at most radio stations I was ever at. It was what they called a combo operation where you ran everything, and you would play the records and so on and so forth. Or if it was a studio where I had an engineer, which was a case a good amount of the time, the engineer played the music. And I said, how did this happen? And he said, well, years ago, James Petrillo, who's a very heavy-handed president of the Musicians Union, uh, radio stations started playing records. And he went to each of the stations. They said, you have a contract with the Musicians Union. And most of them did because most of them had a, a, a station orchestra. <laughs> it's going back really far. And he said, it says in that contract, any music on this station that's played must be played by a member of the American Federation of Musicians, the AFM, or I think it was the AFM. My father was a member of it, whatever it was. And um, they, he made an argument for it, and they had went along with it. And so anybody that played music, literally played music, put a needle down on a record, had to be a musician. And they were members of the Musicians Union. And they were all hired. He kept musicians working. My union didn't do that. My union just fell by the wayside. And they, it, today, there are less union stations in broadcasting and in radio than ever before. I just read that uh, uh, iHeartRadio, which is on the edge of bankruptcy about every other day, uh, uh, just uh, bought up a bunch of stations from this company, Intercom, which I used to work for. In fact, I worked for them at a time where I helped really establish them making some money so that they could buy other radio stations, right? But Intercom just bought all the CBS stations. But in buying the CBS stations, they were going to have too many stations in one market, and so they had to sell some of them off, and they sold them off to iHeartRadio, and iHeartRadio bought one, I think, in Boston. And they told the union, we don't want to abide by your contract any longer. And then they made everybody at the radio station reapply for their jobs just so they wouldn't have to pay them union wages. So that's what's happened to my business. Uh, a real happy state of affairs, folks. Real happy state of affairs. But anyway, nobody seems inter interested in what I was saying. Maybe I won't do these rants anymore because uh, I, I did them before because they were getting really high numbers, but eh, nobody cares. Nobody cares about why my people aren't working anymore and why you're, you know, well, let's be honest. Radio's a thing of the past. There's a whole generation growing up who doesn't even know how to turn on a radio and doesn't care about a radio and doesn't care about getting their music or their whatever from radio because radio quit caring about them. And the only people that listen to radio are old people. And that's why the talk uh, shows are so popular uh, on, on radio. But, you know, I mean, do you really want to hear, if, you're, if you want rap music, can't you just turn on your, your, you know, your, your, uh, your, uh, your iPhone and listen to the music you want to hear rather than something's being force-fed to you? Right. You don't need it. And uh, it's, it's just terrible all the way around. It's just, so there's no radio business anymore. You know, and this is it. But this is this sucks. And I'm going to tell you why it sucks, because there are thousands upon thousands of podcasters, and to make noise above that group is very difficult. To stand out is very difficult. You got to be some 
13-year-old girl giving makeup hints on YouTube to get 10 million followers. I mean, it's, it's, it, and, and I am not of that ilk. I, the people look at me and I say, I become invisible. I'm dismissed by them. All right. And so therefore I'm never going to get that young audience again. I used to get the young audience. I was known as a youth guru when I was in New York city. Uh, but no, that's not the case any longer. And, uh, it's, uh, I've disappeared. I've I've faded, you know. And so I'm here doing my little show and I just do it every night. You know why I do it? I wouldn't say there were enough people here that it would I mean, I I get between all the different ways we disseminate these programs a, a decent audience, an audience that most uh internet broadcasters would be delighted to have. Um but I'm not delighted cuz I'm used to getting 20,000 people at one time. That's the way radio was. And, and so, I, you know, uh, I do it because I want to keep my chops up. Uh, and it, it gets harder and harder every day. But I've done a show almost every day since I left Sirius XM. When I left Sirius XM, the following Monday, we were on the Internet doing a show. It was a TV show with audio and... Uh, uh, I have been doing it, it. It was originally called the Great American Broadcast, and then um, Albert Reynoso said, "Hey, uh, when we go and start a network, let's call it the Great American Broadcast Network." And I said, "Yeah." And then he said, and then he started calling it as a joke, Gabnet, and it, that's how Gabnet. Became. But I've been doing this every day for the last almost four and a half years, but it ain't official till I turn the on the air light on. Anyway, um, and I've been doing it ever since, and I just do it to keep my chops up, just because I want to do it. I don't, you know, I was thinking tonight, why do I do this anymore? Why? And I go, well, if I didn't do it, would I miss it? And I went, well, I don't think I'd miss it for the first week. And uh, maybe I wouldn't miss it for the second week. But by the third week, I'd start climbing the walls and start figuring out how I can get a new show going. But I'm nothing that the basic internet audience wants to hear. I'm too old, all right? And um, I'd start a show that basically plays to nothing but old people and, and their needs and so on, but uh, they don't even know how to get the internet, some of them. So, you know, so the audience I want to go to isn't even there, all right? But all I'm saying is radio doesn't exist anymore, and anybody who thinks it still exists is out of their mind. Uh, and, uh, you know insane anyway let me uh let me turn on the uh the uh, uh the skype here do i say it sound is that depressing i don't I didn't mean it to be depressing i'm just trying to tell you facts of life about what i'm trying to do here you know uh anyway um are we uh are we on i guess we're open i guess we're open for business on skype so if you want to call us and uh talk to us uh, there are several ways to do that. If you go over to gabnet.net, not only will you hear the audio from the show, if you go to Facebook Live, of course, my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash A Bennett, you will see a live representation of the show. Although I find that there's a problem with, uh, 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 what do you call it, with, uh, with the Chrome browser. I don't know why, there just is. So... Uh, you might have some trouble with it. So try Safari if you're having trouble with that. Uh, you know something? Our first uh, first guy in tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is Jeff Stein. Hello, Jeff. Hello, everybody. You're ready and set to go, right? I am. I am. Yeah. And you know, I remember when you first started with Alex. Uh, Albert. With you, Albert and Albert. Yeah. Uh, in New York. And you did it. Video. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We're just getting people on. There's Phil. Yeah. yeah. What were you saying, uh, Jeff? I, I was doing it with Albert. Yeah, I remember the first day. It was very good. Yeah, we were doing a TV show. What it was is uh, I wanted to do a radio show. Okay. So I found a way to put it on radio. And then we were doing it because a friend of mine had a TV studio. So we were doing it out of their TV studio. 
And I, so the first day we went on to test the audio, we turned the cameras on. And then I finally said, well, why don't we just, you know, run it as a video thing? And we did it as a full-born TV show. And I think it yeah. looked good, you know. Uh, we had a virtual set, and we had monitors in back of me with pictures yeah. going up and all that stuff. You know, it was really, it was really very cool. I, I liked that, that show. But here, you want to know what the problem with that show was? Use too much internet. Too much bandwidth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you if you watch two of my shows in a week and you only had like two gigabytes of, of bandwidth from AT and T a month, you could use it up in two days of watching us. Yeah. And people learned that when they started getting the bill or getting s slowed down or whatever. Yeah. And there was no way, you know, this is this doesn't use up the same bandwidth, and a lot of people can watch this at home as well. Uh, here comes uh, Rob, and here comes Renee. And uh, hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Did you hear what I, I was talking about? Because I mentioned you. I didn't hear you mention me. I heard you mentioning the business radio and, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I talked about you uh, in reference to the fact of, of, of voice tracking. You know, uh, that you used to voice track, right? At serious, right? At, at serious, you would voice track, so you you didn't have to be there. No. Now, did they pay you by? Did they pay you by the hour? No, by the show. By the show, okay. Because I remember at Clear Channel, a friend of mine, Lori Thompson, who was my newswoman, uh, went to work for for the Clear Channel, and she. Uh, uh, what do you call it? voice track the shows now let's say you're getting paid 50 bucks an hour let's just say that for grins okay what is all that noise um, uh, 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 so you're, you're um, getting $50 an hour and then you're voice tracking a show for Omaha yeah. well, and maybe not just Omaha but five other towns right and mm -hmm. you're still getting paid fifty dollars an hour, but for what? For voice tracking, so you only got paid for the time it took to voice track. And she was always told do it within an hour and a half. So she was it getting was, seventy-five bucks a week to voice track shows. See, for me, I was I did. They were giving me about uh, thirty grand a year. Yeah. To voice track. Yeah. <clears throat> and I did seven shows a week. Seven six hour shows, I knock them out in about four hours. Yeah, they only paid you 30,000 a year. How terrible is that? But for, when you consider four hours a week, yeah, but so, you didn't. Did you have another job filling up oh, the oh, working oh. full time across the street? Oh, what I was in IT, I was you know, Sirius is in Rockefeller Center, I was right across the street <laughs> in Rockefeller Center, and I would get and, done with work at five. Yeah. Studio time started about five fifteen. I'd walk across, go up to the thirty sixth floor, two hours gone. The next day, go to work. After work, go voice track the second uh, bunch of shows. Now, so, where, were, where were you working besides Sirius at the time? I was working in a public relations firm, oh, okay. right, Rockefeller, forty ninth, forty ninth and six. I'm still saying. Let's say that was your only job. Oh, thirty thousand is a terrible. Sure, pay. but who gets thirty grand for four hours a week? You think about it; it's not bad. Well, a, a broadcast professional, I, I, you know, would get uh, well, four, I, four, I, we, all, wait a minute, four hours a week is all it took you. That's it. Oh. I guess. That's you, I guess I, that's you. Little... I, I guess you were getting overpaid. You know, I don't know. But so I'll... actually, I, that's a lie too, because it was four yeah. hours to record it. But they would email me the uh, music lists. Yeah, and I would go through. They had. Did, I guess they gave it to you as well. ABC had a, uh, a website that had show prep on it. And I would, you know, log into that and take a look at what show prep was there. And I also had a whole ton of sites that I used to visit. So I would look and see where my breaks were and mm. where I was going to talk. And I would say, oh, okay, I'm going to go into this song. So, oh, look, it's something by Prince. Let me find some information about Prince. And so I would just jot down a, what I would want to say there. Yeah. And so I, there was a little show prep involved because they wanted something out of your mouth at every break that that said something, yeah. not just more music, you know, less talk. Right. Uh, so there was some prep time. But I would say maybe, okay, six hours a week, 
30 K mm -hmm. not a bad deal. Well, not a bad deal. However, what you're, what they're doing is they're putting a person out of full-time work by oh, doing no that. Oh, no question about it, but you, you can't. Know. Well, what I'm saying is that's the cheapness of, of I mean, to this day, there are people voice tracking at, at Sirius. And I got to tell you, a person who sits there and get, does a talk show gets 35000 a year. Jeez, and you got to sit there. The reason, I didn't get 35000 a year, but that's why I'm not there anymore. Right. But, it, I mean, you have to put the time in if you're going to do a talk show. Yeah. I, used to, pff, I could mail it in, you know. Yeah, and it, you know, you, if you made a little mistake, it didn't matter. They really didn't want you to fix it. They didn't want it to sound perfect. So if you, you know, they didn't really didn't want you to spend too much time crafting it. They right. wanted it to sound natural and live. Yeah. So they would say, "Keep moving, keep going." So you would just hit the button, and it would bring you to the next location, and you would do your thing, and then you would hit next and next and next up oh, next show, and there you go. Yeah, and it was simple, and it was such a nice gig, and. When it ended, I was so sad. Yeah, but still, it was it, it played into part of the end of radio and into people earning a living in radio. I did seven six-hour shows a week, six-hour music shows, seven six-hour music shows a week. I would, you know, you would never do that for 30000 a year if you were going to sit there. Not to mention I would have hated it. I wouldn't I do a six-hour music show. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I wouldn't do a six-hour music show. I love doing music shows. Uh, well, I remember when I was starting out in the business, I was looking for a job, and there was a, a job in, um, where is it, Fresno, California. And I go into this radio station, and they say, oh, it's a six-hour shift. And they take me into the studio, and it's like two racks on either side of me, and the control board is at the end of this trough. And I went, I've got claustrophobia. I don't think I could do this. You know, oh, I, I, I could... It, 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 well, I don't, I don't mind doing a music show for four hours. I think six hours is a slog. It is. It's a long time. You know, and talk shows shouldn't be more than three. <sighs> I, don't, I don't know how you do it. Well, if you got a lot of commercials and, you know, breaks, but I would never be able to do three Most, hours on GabNet, just constant. Well, I mean, yeah. I find it hard to do two. You know, yeah. I mean, what I'm oh. doing, I'm doing two, but on radio, that would be three. You know? Yeah, music is easy, you know, especially if you like the music. If you don't like the music, then. And that was the beauty of voice tracking, because I don't like 80s music. Yeah. And then, and people say to me, how do you not know the 80s? Well, I didn't have to listen to it because I just kept hitting the button. Right. I knew the intros. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a uh, another uh, thing going on now? Uh, it may get stricken down. Disney is trying to buy uh, a, another uh, studio or, or TV uh, channels uh, uh, right now. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I don't know how you get your news, Phil, but it's yeah, got to yeah, be well, by I, some kind of osmosis yeah, well, they, that gets Patrick that gets <laughs> sidetracked in you, Bakersfield. Are you familiar with? Are you familiar with the Disney story? And yes, what I know the buy? familiar. I'm familiar with the Disney story, and what they're trying to buy is Fox Pictures. Right. Okay, that's it. Okay, well, it's a little different. But the Fox Pictures, I think, owns uh, some stations that would be a conflict no, they don't. in certain areas. No, no, they don't. Is it CNN? No. Fox oh, Jesus, now you're getting your stories really fucked no. up. Now you're, okay. talking about the AT and, now you're talking about the AT&T uh, merger with Time Warner. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's it. I yeah. thought it was Disney. Oh, boy. Right. Oh, God. No uh, extra charge. Hey, I, you know, I bring it up. Uh, yeah, it's sort yeah, of relevant. Patrick had his hand up. Maybe he can give us some facts. Hello. Yeah, it was exactly what you said about Fox Studios. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Fox is thinking of getting out of the movie business because they feel that they want to concentrate their time on all their other media holdings, such as the news, the news organization and Fox Television. They get all their cable, though. Huh? There's all their Fox cable. They have Fox the cable? FX. Oh, FX, oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, they, no, they, no, they want to keep conflict. those. They want to keep those. No. Uh, want me to tell you the conflict, Phil? Yeah, so tell the, me the conflict. Why didn't you read these stories rather than have I'm, to... I'm working. Wait a minute. You, know, it, it, you got all wait, day, wait, you Do I look like story. a fucking newspaper to you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Here, 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 here's the full story. And this is terrible. All right? Uh, uh, AT&T wants to buy T 
Time Warner. Time Warner wants to sell Time Warner to, uh, to uh, and some of the holdings that Time Warner has is, is like HBO, as an right. example, and CNN. And the Trump Justice <laughs> Department says they're going to stand in the way of a merger of the two unless uh, Time Warner sells off CNN. In other words, they want to try and stifle CNN. Isn't that bullshit? It is absolute bullshit. Mr. Trump, really? Hey, you know, I knew there was a story there. Yeah, but you didn't know what town it was in. I don't have to know what the story is. I gave it to you. You're supposed to go run with it. He doesn't even read them, Phil. You know, I mean, if, oh, if, next, you. next you're going to be telling oh, me news oh, stories in hieroglyphs. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Boy, I'll tell you, if we do the drinking game on tonight's show, how many, how drunk is everybody right now? I don't drink, and I'll break the wine off of this, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely will. Exactly. This is engaging. No, but, I mean, how terrible is that that the Justice Department wants to try and prevent, is trying to force Time Warner to get rid of HBO. I mean, not how HBO, but CNN. CNN. Isn't that Huh? How can they do that? What's the conflict of interest there? There yeah. is no conflict of interest. That Trump doesn't like CNN, and he figures by forcing them to sell it off to somebody else, which essentially they're doing anyway when they give it to to AT and T. You know, can't sue, can't sue the government, the DOJ. Oh, they're, for, they're hoping for some right winger buys CNN and will be nice to Trump. That's Are what you serious? He's putting pressure on them. Yes, they won't. They say uh, the DOJ says we're going to fight your merger if you don't get rid of CNN. Holy shit, he's a fucking dictator, man. It really that, that's got to be against the law. Of course he's a motherfucker. Is. The problem is he is the fucking law. Yeah. Fucking no, he's a motherfucker. Just just the little troll yeah. is the law. Well, but just he's telling him what to do, didn't he? The little, e the little Keebler well, elf is the law. America into, right? It's a game of uh, tit for tat or... Uh, oh, yeah. Playing games. Yeah, the only thing is, he wants his tat back. He's a right, right, right down to the fifth grade level. We're going. We're all headed there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. I know there's hardly anybody Joel. watching the video. There must be something wrong with it tonight. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm seeing the video just fine here. So yeah, I don't. I I give up on the, trying to figure this out. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I mean, this is uh, this is the first time that I've seen the government trying to intrude into news uh, gathering. Uh, but that's a Hitler move. It's a Hitler move. Yeah, amongst it's others. Another, well, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. It's another Hitler move that he's doing. <laughs> another Hitler this move. This is not his first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Uh, he was, I thought he was a friend of business. Yeah, only if it's in his interest. Well, as he has a vendetta. Well, I'm sorry, I'm well, as he has a vendetta. Well, you see, I mean, the thing is, yeah, when they say you, you have to sell off CNN to begin with, uh, how does how does AT and T's holdings uh, cause a problem in here? I mean, uh, is, is their merger with uh, uh, with uh, Time Warner giving them too much of something? They just merged with somebody else. Who did they merge with recently? Uh, Direct TV. Direct TV. You know, uh, but that's kind of in the, in the in the same carrier, common carrier business. I just don't see where there's a conflict of interest in AT and T buying up Time Warner. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, it probably um, uh, Time Warner would be a better organization for it. You know. But how getting rid of CNN is going to quit, you know, is why having CNN is going to make them a conglomerate or something like that or a monopoly. That's why you should be able to fight it. Doesn't well, seem to make sense. I mean, the Justice Department should have to have a good reason right. why they have to sell off CNN. But the question is, is AT&T or Time Warner going to fight this? Now, Time Warner should fight it because I'm sure the price they could get for Time Warner would be less without CNN than it would with CNN, right? Yeah. And AT&T sh uh, AT should fight it 
because uh, you know they want to they want to buy a news organization. Why can't they ha do that? By because all they're getting with uh, Time Warner. What else does Time Warner have? They have the movies and the TV shows. Yeah. Uh, wait, Time yeah. Warner. Do, do, who owns? Does Turner still own uh, the broadcast no. Uh, no. the rights to the playoff games and baseball? No, 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 no. No, what it, Turner hasn't been with Time Warner for years. I mean, he has been a major stockholder in it and still okay. remains such because of his yeah. early days with the organization, but it, it's not the same uh, okay. as it was. So what was the Disney story? Because uh, there was a Disney story yesterday. I just yesterday told you too. the Disney story. So, now, weren't you listening to me? Uh, no. It, no, they're, they're, they're trying to buy Fox movies. Oh, yeah, we just funny. had a whole discussion on why Fox is going to get rid of their movie segment and keep everything else because they feel that it's their television properties that are making them, and right. their, uh, not even their newspaper properties, but their television properties that are making them the most money. So they, but they, why is the deal falling through? Uh, it didn't, the Disney no, deal is no. Nobody said the deal was falling through. Uh, that's what I had heard. No, it may fall through because they can't come to an accord. But there's no reason why, you know, why it would fall apart outside of not agreeing on price. Yes, Renee. I'm, I'm sorry, but Phil, did you have alcohol before you showed up tonight? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I had uh, two or three Cape Cods, which is basically uh, cranberry juice and a little bit of vodka. How can you tell but that me? was that was three, uh, three and a half hours ago. Yeah. Does it, look a little perky. No, uh, uh, Renee, understand, this is the way uh, Phil absorbs the news. Want to drink it? Yeah, but, but see, the yeah, problem is, this is kind of the first look time I've watch. Ever... He's got a second windshield, Alex. What? Phil's watch is huge. Look at the face of it. Yeah, Phil, let's see your watch. That's a big Phil face. Well, well, he's frozen now, so we can't oh. see him. And, so, that, and that may be a good thing. Yeah, true. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Tony, yeah. so we can hear Renee. Yes, Renee. Sorry. Normally, that is how Phil absorbs the news, and we all know that. But you told the story, and then three, five, fifteen minutes later, he still asked the same question. That's what, not kind what, of that's normal. He's minute. just he's just talking. He doesn't listen. You think it's the Cape Cod? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Lost sure. him, and we just lost him. Uh, can, can we ask about the, the we have to, can we ask Mark Green about the zombie in the room? The zombie in the room? Who's the zombie? Is there, in the room? Yeah, Mark, you got a zombie back there? Oh, he, he his name is Henry. He came here Halloween, and and never left. Decided to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have his own room? Yeah, he sleeps with the five year old. <laughs> My bandwidth sucks. Yeah, well, you know, you should pay for the high bandwidth. Uh, there is no paying for it. This is all you can get. Wow. You can steal it from the guy next door. <laughs> uh, there you go. Now you know, I, I would if I could. Yeah. yeah. Jump on his network, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Al Alex, I just want to say I heard your oh, but, commentary about but, radio yeah. before the show. Yeah. And you're not too old to do radio. No. Oh, well. I mean, if, if no one knew what you how old you oh, were... Gosh. Or what you look like, or any, or the, you were normal radio voice, you you're terrific, you know. Well, I know it's, that it's the, I the know. world the world has changed. It's not it's not your talent that's changed. You know, I mean, I have somebody who, as I said, is a, a consultant in this business. Who the last time he stayed here said he was listening to me through the through the walls doing the show and said you're the best in the business, and this is a guy who knows the whole business, and I Damn. know I'm still good. Uh, it's just that I am invisible. It's what I was talking about. When you, as you get older, you start to become transparent. You know. Yeah, but, but the only guys, the only people that I, I'm a huge fan of radio. I was, I grew up in Detroit. Yeah. And there was terrific, terrific radio broadcast. And I was kind of a kid who liked who that was my the radio was my friend. I remember the old Howard Cosell, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali fights. And it was radio was terrific for me. But that doesn't exist anymore. So no matter how good you are, that that medium doesn't exist. By the way, the best way to 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 see, to in, 
have, have a, a, the most exciting way to watch a fight is not to watch it at all, but to hear it on radio. Oh, I love it. And the it. best was, baseball just, game that's ever been played would probably be played on radio because the, the excite you, you put a picture in your mind of how exciting it is, you know, and that's oh. and that's dependent now upon the announcer to make it exciting for you. Uh, yeah, there was a great Detroit baseball broadcaster, Ernie Harwell. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that name, but but he 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 made that he made my imagination just click into gear. It was terrific. I loved it. Well, I, I, I used to work for a guy named Gordon McClendon. I've told this story before. He used to do baseball recreations. What he would do is sit in a studio in Dallas, and uh, he had a sound effects guy with him in the same room, and uh, he would get line scores from the game from somebody who would send him by teletype, and then he would simply embellish the game. So and so, says, oh, look at that pop fly out to left field, blah, 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 you know. And uh, his baseball recreations were more popular than the actual broadcasts of the actual games. And, and, and that was the power of radio. That was the power of being able to use radio well. Uh, unfortunately, he got undone when the commissioner of baseball decided that any, you know, depiction of this or recreation of this uh, game which is the way they say it, was aimed directly at Gordon McClendon's business and put him out of business doing that. So he bought a bunch of radio stations, invented Top 40, all news, and hired a guy named Alex Bennett. So, you know. I think it changed with Rush Limbaugh. I think that was the word kind of, everything changed, everything became different. Then. Yeah, but you know, you can't blame Rush Limbaugh for that. I don't, I don't blame yeah, him. I'm just know. saying that's, that's when in my mind it, the, that's like change. blaming that's like blaming the comedian step and fetch it for having stereotyped blacks i mean he was the first guy to do a character black character and it was everybody else that imitated that character that stereotyped blacks and the same thing's true with limbaugh if limbaugh just did what he did and nobody else tried to imitate what limbaugh was doing you, you know you just think of him as being a really good broadcaster who you disagree with but instead, he like opened up this Pandora's box, and all these evils came flying out at us. I and just don't remember the radio people taking a side before him. He, they couldn't, though. They couldn't. Here, here's what happened. You used to have a thing called the Fairness Doctrine. And so if you had an opinion, uh, it had to be countered by somebody else on the air. And I can't remember who was it. Was Reagan that did away with the Fairness Doctrine? Was what, it? I was looking. I'm yeah, gonna look it up. Yeah, look it up. And what <laughs> happened was uh, Limbaugh was a talk show host, but then when they did this, he went, "Oh, well, here's something I can do," and he became very opinionated, and he didn't have to have anybody on to oppose him. So uh, that opened up the whole Pandora's box of all these talk shows with an opinion. And you know, in the old days, you had to have someone on who did, you know, who disagreed with you, like me. <laughs> like you yeah or or uh, it, 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 i guess you could say that if you had a show and you were a conservative and then you had another show you had to have that guy was a liberal you were balancing it off on that radio station but uh you had a candidate on you'd have to have you'd have to offer the other candidate the ability like a presidential candidate or you had to provide equal time you, you had to if if you just besmirched somebody on the air they had to send a letter to that person within within 10 days or something offering them equal time to answer your besmirching of them. That's why Jerry Lewis, uh, you know, saying you'll never walk alone to me one weekend on Memorial Day because they sent him a letter saying Alex said this about you and he didn't decide, he decided not to take them up on the offer, but he went on the air and he said, I, and this is for that disc jockey in New York City, I hope I'm good enough for you. I, I thought he had a doll with pins in it, and it was yeah. written on, across the forehead, Alex. Yeah, that too, yeah. that too. But yeah. uh, all I'm saying is that when they did away with the Fairness Doctrine, uh, all this stuff started to happen. Now, I don't, you know, I don't mind the fact that there are conservative talk shows. I just mind the fact that there are no real left-wing talk shows. And what left-wing talk shows there are aren't very good. You know, I mean, people forget something about Rush Limbaugh. He was a real showman. You know, he was good radio guy. Wouldn't you say, Rob? 
Rush Limbaugh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, but it, but it was har- it wasn't it was it was harmful stuff. No, it was it, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. I don't think he called, you. He called Hillary Clinton. He called Chelsea Clinton a dog. That was like twenty years ago. Well, she didn't look very that, good back no, then. That didn't anyway. happen before him. Well, she didn't look very good back then, anyway. So you know. she, no, but but you get the point. I mean, people in, in when people didn't used to do that before him, that I know of. I'm I'm trying to remember. Did he actually Howard do that? Stern? Yeah, was he around? No, yeah. that was he was before Howard Stern. No, he wasn't. Howard Stern. Rush Limbaugh was, was well, maybe Rush maybe down in New York. York. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's, yeah, Rush Limbaugh started in Sacramento. He what was before yeah. Howard Stern. Yeah, but Rush Howard Stern Limbaugh. said the, uh, said shocking things as well. No, that was a yeah. different. But that was a different. That was in a that was wait, in a basically a, a comedy that's, show that's format. Different. That's like Alex's blue radio yeah. stuff. That's that's not the same as Rush Limbaugh was mainstream. Yeah, uh, uh, Renee had her hand up. Did you? Renee, or you were yeah, doing something. it was the FCC introduced the this uh, fairness doctrine in 1949. Mm-hmm. Uh, it held the license; everything went well until the FCC eliminated the policy in 1987 and removed all of the rules and the impact policies in August of 2011. Okay. It's all but dead. So, so you can have a radio station that's oh, nothing dead. but conservatives all day long, and nobody's there dead. to reply, which I consider very dull radio. Okay, I mean, have you ever heard one conservative talk show host after another conservative talk show host after another yeah. conservative talk show host? It's pretty Most, boring shit. That's all that's on, Alex. That's all yeah. that's on. That's all well, that's you know, on the radio. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, years ago, I was on, uh, when I was on WMCA in New York, I was on with a guy by the name of... Uh, uh, um, Barry? But no, no, Grant. No. Um, Bob Grant. Bob Grant. And and Bob and I, his show was right before mine, and then we did a crossover. And during the crossover, he and I would yell and scream at each other. Of course, we were laughing at each other, too, when we were doing it. But we would do this real show of two people arguing with each other over politics, and then i go do my show. That made it exciting. You know, that made radio interesting because you had these diverging opinions. But now when you have one talk show after the next talk show after the next talk, I'll tell you something even even worse. Uh, right now, I, 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 today I decided for the last couple of days I've been checking the various networks, you know, MSNBC and CNN and, and Fox, to see what they top as their first story, Right. And all of them lead with the first, the same first story every day. I mean, if I were running CNN, I would say, we don't lead with that story. We lead with another story. So we're not running the same thing the other guys are running at the same time. But even that is getting so predictable, I can't even watch them anymore. You know. Another I'm, Hitler. Huh? What were you saying, Renee? Another Hitler move. Another Hitler move. Why yeah, are you saying that? Alex, we've had a lot of hurricanes and shootings, and so it, it just stands to reason they're going to have the same story. You know what? You, have you ever heard of Sinclair Broadcasting? Yeah, let me, I'll yeah. get to that in a second, but Patrick has his hand up, and then we'll get to Sinclair. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, when I still had Sirius, um, mm-hmm. when I do my drive home from work, I would switch on sometimes like Tom Hartman or... Uh, your uh, your buddy Matsumela, whatever his last name was, I forget what his radio name was. Ma- um, I used to call him Matsumil Mafume. <laughs> I, I would, and, and I would listen to some of the left posts. Yeah. And the problem that I had with them is I would get in a fucking car accident out of boredom with their monotonous tone. The only one that I found that to keep my interest because she knew what inflection was, was Randy Rhodes. Yeah. And you. But I mean, otherwise, Tom Hartman... And what what, I, what was it about my presentation that appealed to you? Well, you, you, you varied everything. You, you kept everything interesting. And you probably didn't know what my, my opinion was going to be on everything. And now, the other thing is... I mean, I knew you obviously weren't a righty, but you came out with an opinion that 
I still remember when um, it was a recall here in Wisconsin for Governor Walker. And you were against the recall because, as you said, let him have a chance. You elected him. Let him. Yeah, well, I, him. what I called it, what, what I called it, and I, I, I believe it to this day to be true, is it was buyer's remorse. <laughs> You know, here, we elected this guy. Oh, wait a minute. We've got buyer's remorse. Let's get him out of office. And if every time somebody gets into office, we try and push him out of office, you know, our democracy is going to go to shit. No, you may have to suck it up and put up with that guy for four years. But when he's when he when the four years are up, you got a chance to get him out fair and square. They did it in California and they're trying to do it to Trump, you know. Uh, trying to do it to try. He's proven. No, no, Trump is not. They're not trying to do not, anything to Trump. He's handing it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, but they've been trying since day one. Uh, they, they've been hoping for uh, the delegates to, to, uh, well, to jump well, ship. Well, that's why. And, and so yeah. forth. Well, that's why I've said over and over again, uh, 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 you know, Amy gets very mad when I say it to her uh, the few times I've been on the show there. That, you know, why are you trying to impeach this guy? It's not going to happen. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's the it's the outside bet. Why don't you do everything you can to, like, slow him down, you know, to make uh, shoot him in the foot and make him hobble? Uh, They're doing that, too. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Patrick, because I, I wanted to get to our, our, our good friend, Mr. Green. Uh, because he had a question about Sinclair Broadcasting, which all of a sudden nobody knew what Sinclair Broadcasting was a couple of months ago. And all of a sudden now everybody knows that Sinclair has been doing this nefarious thing for a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I never I never, I never, never lived where you were a broadcaster, Alex, until so I first heard of you on Sirius. Mm-hmm. And I liked you because you talked about tits and also <laughs> oh, you had quickies. You know, oh, and I just and- thought I thought that was just terrific radio. It was just it was just real life stuff, and not like this political stuff. But but the Sinclair, I, I think I think I heard that they're going to buy WGN in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy! It and so and so they own like everything, and and they've got this dude Sebastian Gorka, who's on their. On all their shows every day. They have to run this commentary by this guy on all their stations. Right, right. And, 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 then, and, and by Boris the way. Epstein, the, the Boris Epstein, the Trump spokesman, he's like their, their lead sales. It's just. Well, wait, wait, just, wait a minute. Add to that the fact that they also uh, send out to each of the stations scripts for what they're supposed to say on their newscast. So the news is all being slanted from the home office. If yeah, you, see, that's that's not what I want radio to be. It's and television. It's, it's television. Gone. It's, it's te- gone this, that's, te- that's, that's, tele- television. that's television. If, it's if television. you go on YouTube and you Google Sinclair, you know what you'll find? What? You'll find somebody did a great edit job, and you can watch all these Sinclair stations and their anchor people reading the same stories. Oh, no, you know, you know who did that? Who and, did that? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy on HBO. Uh you know, uh, oh God, my mind is just a blank. Oh, is that the old guy? Or, no, you know what's his name? Uh, Bill. No, the other guy. Uh, <laughs> John I'm Oliver. John Oliver. Oliver. John Oliver. Yes, that's right. Yes. It was fascinating to watch. He did a whole piece on them, and one of the parts of that piece was to show the same story being read by like twenty different anchors across the country. Yep. And all of them trying to parse it like, you know, they were reading their own copy. Horrible. Yeah. It should be stopped. Why that's allowed to happen? Well. It's a propaganda machine. What we've done, if we hadn't, if we deregulated radio too much, you know. Uh, I, I mean, I, I was brought up in radio in a day and time where you, you know, you pretty much adhered to the rules because you didn't want to lose your license. Although nobody ever lost a license. That was the great. Well, that, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Remember RKO? RKO generally lost all their radio stations and their television stations. Yes, but that was because of uh, a practice, a, a, a financial practices. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you never had. 
To begin with, you never had in the old days because of the way the FCC ran things. Tell, number one, they always said you can't do that because we'll lose our license. But since the in, uh, creation of the FCC until the time when I was starting up in broadcasting, only one radio station had ever lost their license, and that was for financial misconduct. Uh, not for swear words going out over the air or political opinion or anything like that. And uh, the FCC, the FCC in those days considered themselves uh, an organization that really was an engineering organization. Uh, to begin with, the FCC was set up because the original FCC um, pact or uh, laws or whatever start off with a preamble saying, the airwaves belong to the people. And so the reason for the FCC was they were the ombudsman for the people. In other words, they were the people who handled the licenses, watched over them, and were the protector for the people to make sure that everything was being done right, that you know, political opinions were averaged out, uh, all those things. But they were never set up as censors. What they really were were engineers who figured out how strong your could signal could be or if it was interrupting somebody else's signal. Because when the FCC was right. created, radio stations would just start and some guy would go, well, that guy's got a popular radio station. Why don't we go on his frequency with more power? You know, And it was just, it was Dodge City. So the FCC was created really to solve those problems, not you know, political opinions and did you say a swear word or whatever. So uh, the FCC at that time never wanted to get into the business of censorship. That was not their job. But now they seem to be getting into that business. And it's, it's, uh, yep. it's, it's sad. Yeah. So anyway. All right. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you, folks. Uh, you know. uh, well, I'll, I'll change, changing gears here, it looks like the women grabbed back yesterday. The what? The women. Yeah. Grab, grabbed back. Remember how Donald Trump says he grabs? Grabbed by the pussy. Yeah, I think the woman grabbed back yesterday. Yeah, what do you mean? Because a lot of women won yesterday? No, in the election. No, I'm saying there, there was a there was a county in Virginia with a transgender. Hillary Clinton, the Hillary Clinton won by 17 points, and this guy that ran for governor of Virginia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A male, a white middle-aged male, won by 22. I think all these women said, "We've had enough of this shit. We're gonna, we're gonna show up." The and demographics, and and the demographics decent, in those counties. And decency is gonna is gonna return to this country. That's yeah. what, that's my take. The demographic in those counties changed. Uh, Virginia's changing. Uh, it, it's going blue. Yeah, uh, and, he, and even though there's a it happened in one day, Phil. I, I even though there's a lot of red area, nobody lives in that areas in those areas in Virginia. Yeah, that's they all the, live that's, in. That's the old Yogi Berra saying that this place nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. No, 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 no. It's true. What he's saying is true. Loudon, the the suburbs of DC, Loudon County, Fairfax County, Prince William County, they have especially Loudon County was a red county not more than five, six years ago. But the population has been booming in this area. That's where I live, right? The population here is booming like crazy. Lots of uh, intelligent, college-educated people work and live in these counties now, and it's gone blue. Hmm. And that's the, tr that's the reason. Uh, the, the, the education level has gone up. The, uh, the uh, people make a good amount of money. In fact, Fairfax County and Loudoun County flip-flop. You could Google this. They flip-flop back and forth between which one is the richest county in the country. Wow. Right now it's Loudoun, I believe. Uh, Patrick. Bullshit. Yeah, I, I wanted to say early, earlier when you were talking about impeachment, and this is also piggybacked on what Mark was just saying, is rather than focusing on impeaching, do what happened yesterday. It incrementally start winning elections, and it has to be in the, in the House and the Senate, and then if he's still there in, you know, two years, and he hasn't you know, died or anything, and they 
the Democrat take back the House and the Senate, he's impotent. I mean, he's almost impotent now because a lot of the Republicans don't like him. Well, the, a but, lot of the Republicans, Patrick, are starting to see that their future is at stake here if they side with him, that this may not be a good place to be, these Republican candidates that are coming up. Now, we don't know what's going to happen in a year. It could be that this is a harbinger of the future, which is wonderful, okay? But on the other hand, it could just be a little... You know, one-shot deal that makes the Democrats feel that, hey, life's getting better. You know, well, it's not. It's all, not until you make it All the special elections, all the special elections up until the, these, these uh, ones that occurred yesterday have been won by Republicans. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but it, it, even I was watching Fox today. The Republicans think that last night was not a good thing for Trump's no, presidency. It's not. And, and And, you know, most midterm elections— okay. Uh, end up uh, 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 with a big transfer of power in the House and the Senate. Yeah, let me go over to um, let me go over to uh, Renee. She's got her hand up, and then Patrick after that. So uh, one note to Patrick: I think it has to be a multiple prong approach in order to bring some stability back into the situation. So when you said that they need to win, oh, absolutely, the Democrats need to win. But the issue of this impeachment, I don't, I, uh, for me, it isn't the fact that it's such a jackass and he should never have been there. If he's got real ties to Russia, you, you got to go for impeachment. If you can prove, if there's evidence there that our president of the United States happens to be buds, you know, with our our sworn enemies, you, you got to wonder about that because well, you well, have to well, always approach wait, wait, that. Hold on a second. Kind of thing we we, were, we were enemies with China, and now we get along with them. You know. Yeah, in spite of the no. fact that they've gone, oh. they've really gone well, right wing or left wing or whatever wing you go to when you go to the other side, because they just made this guy like the biggest president since Mao, uh, the biggest chairman since Mao. Uh, uh, what I wanted to say to you, Renee, is that you're wasting your time when you want to try and impeach this guy. Uh, you're wasting, wait a minute, hold on a second. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your effort. Your effort would be better put into making sure that these candidates get elected. Just because you impeach Trump doesn't mean you don't still have these ugly fucking goddamn motherfucking Republicans in office. And you got to do something about that. It's got to be a multi-pronged approach. And and see, the impeachment issue is, yeah. uh, and I know this is a dead dog thing, so you can all just jump on me for it. So here we go. When we told the jackass Republicans that we were laughing stocks on the planet because we were not willing to impeach uh Bill Clinton for doing what he did with Monica Lewinsky in the in the Oval Office or on, in Washington, the White House. We told you not to do it. And you continue to beat that drum and beat that drum. You ground the entire United States government down to a screeching halt for two years because you didn't want to deal with it. So as far as I'm concerned, I think treason trumps a blowjob every time. Yeah. So full I house. never respond to this. Yeah. Yeah. Full house. We have a full house, by the way. Yes, uh, 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 Patrick. The one thing that I'm curious to know is in the two uh, gubernatorial elections yesterday, um, was it all Democrats that came out or was it some of the people that went for Trump who were third party people or, you know, I mean, I just because I, I, I was hearing on like MSNBC that, you know, everybody got a big boner now because all the Democrats came up. Well, I, they, I, I, I'm wondering if they did. And it's not the same people that voted for Trump have that remorse and said, you know what? We need the Democrats back in, so that's what we're going to do. Well, I to begin with, uh, you know, I think that in any election, 
you've got your Democrats, you've got your Republicans, and you've got those people who can move either way, even though they may be a Republican, they may go vote over on the other side. And I think you have to get those, those on-the-fence voters. The other ones are not going to change their opinion. You know, they're not going to That's what move. Reagan did. Yeah. Ray, Reagan, uh, they call them Reagan Democrats. Yeah, uh, or Ray, you know, they well, to me, over. there is no such thing. There's a Ray, uh, the Reagan Democrat traitors. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I just think, uh, you know, uh, speaking to what I was saying to Renee, that to, to spend our time trying to impeach uh, Trump, let's say we do. I mean, how long did it take for them to finally impeach Bill Clinton? You know, I mean, I would say I would say Trump may be out of office before we ever get around to the impeachment proceedings. Well, what might happen is he might resign and not have to go. We wouldn't have to go through that. But then again, he this is Donald Trump. Do you think he's really the kind to resign in the face of something like that? Well, he's not a quitter. Well, he very well might because he doesn't he can't handle anybody attacking him he can't handle divert you know um what's the word i'm looking for he doesn't any kind of conflict he he self-destructs how, how do you say he's not a quitter when he when he went bankrupt four times that, that, that's going bankrupt that's not quitting that's yeah. that's financial yeah. stupidity that's starting over <laughs> no no it's quitting it's, it's it's making everybody else pay your bills patrick has his hand up and then she has her hand up it's yeah not, no it's not it's a fact uh, I think the only way that, that Trump quit is if there is proof, real proof, not the hearsay horseshit, but real proof about Russia. And then he knows that there's no legal way out. Then I think he will quit so that he can say, you know, I wasn't impeached, you know, and yeah. he can find that door. But it's got to be real proof. Uh, uh, Mark, and then then, then yeah. Renee. This is real quick. I don't know if you heard Corey Lewandowski today or yesterday. He got an email from this Carter Page about talking to the Russians, mm -hmm. and Carter Page and and Lewandowski admitted he got it, but he forgot about it when he testified because it was Father's Day, and that's why he forgot. Well, I heard about that. <laughs> well, if you believe that, then. The most embarrassing moment of the day was Donald Trump uh, speaking in South Korea and mentioning that, uh, you know, uh, the P PGA had its uh, uh, its match at uh, LPGA. The LPGA uh, had its um, had its, uh, I don't know, best big tournament or whatever uh, at one of his golf courses and a Korean one. I mean, oh, in Koreans. the middle of this speech to this august body in, in South Korea, he has to put a plug in for one of his properties. You know, what is with this guy? That's, that's the American classic. way. Huh? No, it's he's it's, an idiot. I thought he was going to make a racist comment. He is so classy. Him and his gold toilet is classy. <laughs> his gold toilet, yeah. He's disgusting, really. That's not he's got no class. And you know what? Even if Trump resigns and he actually does quit, yeah. because he lives in whatever fucking reality he lives in, he's gonna say he won anyway, and he didn't really. Quit. By the way, if, if you didn't know, if you know, didn't know I Donald, think he did. if you didn't know Donald Trump, Trump if, if you didn't know Donald Trump, and you saw him show up somewhere with his wife, wouldn't you say who's the hooker? <laughs> I think yeah. she's beautiful. Huh? And I think that she has great style. Hey, and uh, number one, and she can afford number message. one. Number one, she can afford that style, Phil. Secondly, she looks good because she's had facelifts and face work and tit jobs and the whole thing. She hey. has been and and because she is playing the role of trophy wife. Mm. Well, I had hair plugs. You know. I, well, that didn't help you. <laughs> I still can't get over the hair plugs. That's a lot of money. I'd be afraid to get a haircut. Well, that money would be on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder what, I wonder what happens if the hair plugs doesn't work. You got to take out the hair plugs and put new ones in? Yeah. Nah, they work. Well, I sometimes, uh, what if they don't, though, Phil? Well, Phil, wait a minute. Well, it's it, been 15 it, years. They're still there. Yeah. yeah That's pretty good. Hey, hey Mike, it, it's, yeah. uh, it's a lot like the spark plugs in your car. You have to change them at every tune-up. 
So are they all so every was it every two thousand miles? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of uh, jalopy you guys are driving. You know, I thought you changed plugs every hundred thousand. Oh, oh. Um, oh. Um, 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 um. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, hey, how do you guys stay awake this late? You know, I, I sleep late. I read. Oh yeah, you're. Yeah, you're, 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 you know, I'm on the West Coast. You know, it's it's nine o'clock when we're done. You know, it's it's eleven. It's almost eleven thirty. Well, yeah, and you uh, and you thought this East was Coast time. you thought this was easy for me, huh? Oh yeah. Jesus Christ! I you know, and I took a nap. Wah, 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 wah. I'm going to sleep to work tomorrow. Honey. Well, no, you can say that, Mike. But he's in the uh, he's in Florida right now. He's on the yeah, same, the same oh, time crazy. zone. Awesome. Same time zone we are, and he's not used to it. Jeff's yeah. used to it. Jeff's hail and hearty. Have, he's still whining. Yeah. yeah, and Rob, I don't know how you guys stay up every night. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how they keep from going to sleep the way I am on this show, but anyway. <laughs> I get You're break. fine. We and go. you know what? what? I didn't get a chance to say that. Uh, you asked why people listen to you. It's because you're fair, and uh, you, you're not promoting just your view. Uh, if something's right, it's right, and if it's wrong, it's wrong, and you take you take a position because it's fair. Well, this this format, for instance, is a format that you know I would like to see a lot of radio stations employ, because what it does is it does give a good, well-rounded uh, kind of opinion. In fact, the point is here that we have like two conservatives here. We've got some liberals. We've got some people in the middle. People who change will change from place to place, but it's not a gang bang. You know, it's not like if you turn on Fox, there are like four women there and, and a male on a show called Outnumbered. And uh, yes, yes, I know what you're saying, Patrick. Yes, I like to look up their dresses when I can. But uh, <laughs> and it's statements like that that is why Mark Green listens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I don't. I, love, I, I and, and it's the reason why Renee would through. like to shoot me. You know. So. So is Patrick a conservative or is he just fiscally conservative? No, he's you're a conservative, right? For the most part, you consider yourself right winger. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not not partly, but the thing is, I removed the term Republican when Trump won. Because I don't want to be associated with the Republican Party. And the nice thing is, in the state of Wisconsin, you don't have to register as a party member. So when I go to the polls, I can vote for whomever I want. I like it's Pennsylvania. Crazy. Is Trump really a Republican? You know, all the Republicans, b before he was elected, came out and did everything they could to tear this guy down, including two past president Republicans, uh, Romney. Uh, you know, there, there wasn't anyone that wanted this guy. And uh, I think, yes, he ran as a Republican. Uh, he won the election. But I don't think I think he's anti-Republican. And I really think that he wants to tear down the Republicans. And, you know, I kind of like him for that. Hmm. Well, I, no, I don't think anybody knows what Republican even means anymore. I don't. I don't know what conservative even means. Does well, it mean? Does it mean you can have a machine gun? Is that is that conservative? Well, to an extent, I don't even know what liberal means as far as the establishment Dems are concerned. I think liberal means just trying to do what's right. I think liberal I, means trying to trying it, to do it, to, to, to that that everything's way. not about just you. What's right? I think they're all out for their own. The, the whole House and the Senate. That all they want to do is what's in it for them. Uh, they don't represent us. And, uh, you know, Trump, even though you don't like him, he, he's really fighting these guys. We, we've got a we've got a radio show here, Alex, called Armed America Radio. Oh, really? Armed America Radio. Now, is that an over-the-air broadcast station? Yeah. Yeah, it's syndicated. It's all across the country. Oh, so it, it's, 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 wait a minute. Well, hold on a second. It's it, on it, Sunday it, nights. It, 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 oh, oh, okay, so it's a singular show. It's a singular show. Okay, it's so a, it's not, it's, you don't have a station called Armed America Radio. That's the name of the show. Like, you're yeah. Gab, not their name. That's the no, name no, of the no, show. No, 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 no. My, our, my no, show is the called Ramble. The Ramble. The, the Ramble. network okay. is Gab. Okay, okay. But anyway, after the Texas church shooting, yeah. they were, they, I listened to them Sunday night to see what they would say about that. And they were unapologetically <laughs> defiant about saying they're sorry. 
Excellent. No, why more, should they be sorry? Whatsoever about the shooting in Texas. Then why should they be say, sorry? Then I say Sandy Hook, and I don't ever have to talk no. to you about gun rights again. If you don't have a problem with slaughtering children, I don't have to have a conversation with you. It's 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 mental well, health Well, get ready problems. to not talk it's to drugs. Phil. Well, yeah, jump on that bandwagon, baby. Well, no. that's what it is. They describe themselves as conservative. That's that's what I don't get. I have a question yeah. for you, Phil. If, yeah. if, if you can go down to the local uh, uh, nuclear uh, weapon fair in your town and buy a small nuclear bomb and bring it home, mm -hmm. don't you think by now there would have been lots of nuclear bombs going off? It's, uh, yeah. Well, so it's the same thing. The more you allow guns out there, especially these assault w weapons, all right, you want to go shoot a 22 or a 12-gauge shotgun for fun, or you want to do a little hunting, you don't need these special stocks they have, and you don't need mega clips that they have, and you don't need assault rifles. So why they, are they for sale? You, you only dislike them because they look uh, menacing. Uh, they do the well, same yeah. thing <laughs> as other guns that menacing. don't look menacing and aren't painted black. I don't, I, I'm not in love with an alligator or a crocodile, but just because they look menacing doesn't mean that I hate them. Yeah, I got nothing to do with the way they look. Well, <laughs> and, and, uh, Patrick, you were uh, shaking your head on this one. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, we covered this a number of years ago, and I made the point that... You think we don't it, like a gun because of the way it looks? Yes. Well, now, wait no. a minute. Hold on. I Hold don't on. like a gun because okay. what it does. Hang on. Let Patrick, the normal person, speak, please. <laughs> People like me, I like the aesthetic of an AR-15. If I were to go buy a rifle, that is what I would buy because I like the aesthetics of it. And that is an attractive rifle for many, many people. It just so happens that a lot of these shootings use this type of weapon. However, it's the same weapon as if you were to take a wooden stock and make it look like a 30 odd six, except it would have a, a magazine of what, uh, six or eight uh, rounds in it. These are 15, 20 round clips. All right, maybe you don't need that many, but. Not every, I mean, I wouldn't have one for that. I would have uh, whatever would be issued with it, which is typically 15. And it's no different. I mean, the, the, um, the, the, the bullet is the same as many other weapons on the market. The only thing is it looks more, it looks military style. It looks and menacing. Well, I'll tell you straight up. Because... You Okay, wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. Jeff has his hand up. Let me let me, let's listen to Jeff here. Your 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 microphone You're is muted. On. You're muted. Do, do, do you know sign language? Yeah. You, you, we heard you for a second there. We heard you for a second there. Oh. So what Phil was saying was that we don't like, this is not what Patrick said. Yes, we it is. Like, uh, no, Patrick, Patrick was stating the fact that he's got a hard on for an AR something. Because well, he, he, he likes the way it looks. And I'm telling okay, you, okay. he's got well, a hard well, on for well, it because you don't like the way it looks. Let's see, let's see here. Now, wait a minute. I don't know what it looks like. Well, that's, that's actually not the reason. Well, hold on. It looks like Je Jeff. Can you can you talk to us now? Yeah, I'm gonna try this again. Yeah, is that you. coming? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, tomorrow I'm getting on an airplane, and you know there was uh, in New York somebody with a couple of airplanes killed. What was it? Four thousand. Thirty-five hundred people. No, no, two, it's three thousand. A little under three thousand. Right. And, and, uh, and the Pentagon those, those and the airplanes were very dangerous. They were very dangerous things at that time. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize it, but we found, we learned from it. Yeah. And when we learned from it, we changed the regulations. And now you have to go through all kinds of secret equipment. You have to be tested. 
you you have to uh, there's there's things in the airplane that keep it locked from the pilots so nobody else can get in there there's all kinds of things that have done to make it safe and since then we haven't had many of those problems anymore they've done things like that for the ar-15 there's a little uh, bullet button uh, that, that you have to uh, push in with a bullet to, in order to don't fire give the children. And you don't give them some the mental cases. And well, you don't need 27 of them. Well, you know, our government uh, messed up on this uh, last shooting, the church shooting. Uh, this guy escaped from a mental institution. He was uh, convicted and spent a year in jail for uh, Phil, abusing Phil, his spouse Phil, and child. Phil, we know all this. Uh, we know all this, know, Phil. This guy we know should all never this. have... We, he we should know never have owned this. a weapon. No, he should have never owned a weapon, but he got one. And you know why he got one? Because they were available. It's no, a, because... Because the, they were the available, The Phil. mental health reporting failed us no as a no nation. no don't he bought his gun at a trade show right he bought his gun in a fucking parking lot at one of those jackass trade shows is that correct i don't think so i don't think so either i think he bought it at a gun store yeah yeah and, 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 and he went and he bought it legally uh, based no, on don't the blame don't blame had. don't blame the people uh, because this guy fell through the cracks Blame what he could get his hands on when he fell through those cracks. No, you're blaming an inanimate object for somebody. It's not an inanimate condition. object the minute you pull the trigger on it, Phil, and it kills that, well, people. It's a person. Listen, no, I'm going to tell I, you. I listen, I'm going to. Phil, Phil. I, what? I got a question what for wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What is the use of a gun? What is it? Its primary use. Uh, it has a number of primary no, no, uses. No, no, it only has one, but give me the one. Uh, tell me what you think the primary uses are, and don't tell me target practice. That's no, just. I, I believe that it uh, keeps uh, 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 governments from being tyrannical. Oh, I see. And, okay, uh, fine. Oh, and that, that bullshit. Uh, an that arm, bullshit. An armed yeah. citizenry. That, yeah. Let me spit an, an armed citizenry uh, uh, it, keeps the government uh, in line. Oh, really? It's a check and balance. Really? Oh, it has, huh? <laughs> Yeah, tax bill. They're gonna go with night vision and uh, bombs on you. Stealth bombers what? and uh, tactical nukes and bunker buster missiles and et cetera, et cetera. Well, those, why, uh, those two 12 Ryan, HP shooters really will do a number on the Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, why, why does the government want to take those away, books away, and all the other things? This is what tyrannical governments do. The, the, the Nazis, the Nazis burned books and took their guns away. Uh, it's Phil, the first Phil, answer me a question, Phil. And I can still Phil, Phil, Tim, 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 Tim wants to chime in here, and I have to uh, be, as on, be as ombudsman because he doesn't have video ever, so he can't raise his hand. Go ahead, Tim. Just, uh, I like the aesthetic of, of sticks of dynamite. I like the aesthetic of a machine gun. Those are illegal. I think, I think the uh, assault weapons are past the boundaries. You can have a gun, but you don't need an assault weapon, which is to kill massive amounts of people, not just to kill one. I, 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 I love, I love, the, I love the aesthetic of uh, Kevin Spacey's penis, but I'm never going to be able to see it again. <laughs> Did you see it the first time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope so, like the first time. It's crazy. He's, uh, he's not young enough to see it. Yeah. Neither am I. <laughs> I can't have a nuclear weapon either, but you know, there's other things I can have. But hey, Tim, you do want one. Okay, so hold on a Absolutely. second. Absolutely. But if I, I can go to another country and get it. Yeah, well, if okay. Kim Jong-un can't get one, why can you? You're you know? completely missing the point of using... Exactly. Tell the him, point is, assault... You know, I've heard the Democrats, uh, Democrats are, uh, are um, submitting a new bill to, to ban assault weapons like the one that expired in 94. <laughs> <clears throat> Wonderful. Well, and, and if they get into power, maybe they'll pass it. Nah, well, never have. Uh, and we live without assault weapons for what was it, ten years or something? I don't buy. I don't buy that you're going to stop a tyrannical nation from being tyrannical if you have guns. I think that's, that's a better example. I think that's a lame fucking Trevor, excuse yeah. based upon no proof whatsoever yeah. because Alex, it, we've never had a reason to do hey. it. So the, it, the Nazis came oh, in, they no, took the guns, the, this, the this, were wait a minute, this isn't Germany, and we aren't the Nazis. It's a different and situation. And also, uh, you know, what happened during these uh, things, whether it was uh, uh, these hurricanes uh -huh. and so forth, 
People had there was what, no. What's law. that? What's that AR it, gun? What's the AR gun you're talking about? The AR. You need to get a what, wait a minute, hold on. AR fifteen. The AR fifteen. Yes. Did the Germans ever have AR fifteens? No, they got. A, they no. had other uh, ones. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. So yeah. you know, if, 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 we're talking had, about sophistication of weaponry. We're talking about uh, magazines that uh, can shoot fifty well, bullets at a time. Yeah. Alex, you don't go to a, a a banquet, or I mean, you don't go to a gun battle with a slingshot. Yes, you, you do. Know? Yes, you do. If you're really good with the slingshot, you go with the slingshot. Throwing gas at home. So that's fine. Hey, hey, John, hey, John, John, hey Tim, I got Cyclone B for you. So they're, they're and it was Cyclone D, by the way. Assault weapons or WMDs it should be illegal. Yes, uh, Patrick. Not, that's your that's one million. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We got people with their hands up. First, let's see. Who was first? Was it? Oh, God. Everybody's got their hands <laughs> up on this one. Who was up it's first? My, uh, 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 Rob, then uh, I, Patrick, I get, and then Jeff. Okay. Um, Phil, you want a gun? Patrick, you want a gun? Great. Have your guns. But you sure. none of this is going to go away. And I'm sick of hearing about all of these people. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, because they don't solve anything. And this is going to be, this is what our country will become. Well, Every day there's going to be killings. I'll, I'll let Phil, I'll let Phil, some of those hold, hold on a second, a hold on a second, Phil. It's now Patrick's turn. Um, two things. Yeah. Uh, one, Jim, during the assault weapon ban uh, that we had in the 90s, anybody who had them, they were grandfathered in, so they were still there. So if we didn't get rid of them, they didn't magically disappear. If you had one, you were still allowed to keep it. Just like if you own a machine gun legally before they became illegal in 1980 or 81, you can still legally own it. There are a lot of rules around it. Um, and then two, uh, Alex, um, World War II, the German, the American, the French, the British, they all did have machine gun and submachine gun. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing as what an AR-15 is. Okay. They were M M M16. By the way, if Jack Bishop is trying to call Jack, I can't put you on because I just have too many people. And you want I, me to drop off? No, uh, no, no, you don't have to drop off. Um, but, uh, well, if you want to drop off, Pat, uh, drop off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All righty. Let, let me, let me add him. Let me see here. Just get rid of you, Tony. There we go. And, uh, where is, uh, well, what happened call, to call him back? What? Call uh, him oh, back. oh, I got to get rid of Tony. Hold on a second. Remove person from group. And then, then, uh, Jack will fit in here. Are you there, Jack? Yes, Captain. Let me turn this monitor down. Uh, you, you, you know, turn your camera on, will you? Okay. There we there, go. There, there we, we go. go. Okay. We go. Yeah. yeah. By now, the way, thank Tony. He got off so you could get on. Well, I just want to say, look, as somebody who had a family member to die because of a gun, it wasn't an AR-15, uh, I go back to this. You started it, Alex. The purpose, the primary purpose of a gun is to destroy the life of something or someone. It is the only purpose. It is really the I only purpose. Well, no, no, you're talking about... You're, you're a damn fool. I think it's a deterrent to crime. All right, all right. What? What? We have more guns per person in this country than probably anywhere in the world. And how much crime have we really deterred? Oh, uh, and Phil, yeah, it, you know, it, you know, as a as a commissioned officer who had to do firing. Now don't practice, say commissioned officer because that would infer that he was, was in the military. Officer. He, he was never. Right. He was never in the military. I was, I was sworn. All right, I'll take the term sworn. Didn't you have to qualify with a handgun? Yes. So you know, that even a good shot, a a good shot with police training, only hits. What he's shooting at about 35 time, thirty five percent of the time. I could put it through the same hole in the target. A hundred rounds, that's same you. hole. That's that's you. You oh, may be the exception, but the average officer, according to all of the reports that are out there, hits what he's shooting at thirty five percent of the time. Well, that's poor training. Well, it may be poor training. You can put it in the. You can put it in the same hole. How many times in a hundred rounds? 
I shoot every Sunday. I shoot 100 rounds, and I can put it uh, within a three-inch hole. Uh, I make a three-inch hole in the target at 25 yards. So and how, that, how, how, how many times has it gone it to the same hole? Uh, 100 times. Oh, just like Kevin Spacey. That's my seven <laughs> second <laughs> boo. Kevin Spacey <laughs> joke of the that. night. So. But, but look, you, you got said... one of those GPS rifles, Phil? No, no. I shoot a 45. All right. You don't have guided, uh, ammo? Hmm? No, it's just 230. Uh, all, all, I know is, all, I, all I know is as someone who once had a gun pointed in his face for about an hour, um, I, I, I think that's where I got my tr true hatred and fear of guns. Which and I think it, huh? that? what? That was which a friend of his. A which friend of his was that? <laughs> which what? Which wife was that? Did you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. ex wife. Uh, I would like to hear. I would like to hear Phil repeat what he said about his accuracy with a forty-five. At twenty-five yards, I I shoot into a th about a three-inch hole. A uh, hundred rounds every Sunday. That's what she said. Boom, boom. Yeah. No one, no one can do that. I do it at, at, at twenty-one feet, and uh, at, at most of my I rounds can, are twenty-one listen, feet. Listen, Phil, I, I carry to forty-five. You can't hit anybody within ten feet. Are well, let me to, tell you something. The forty-five that you carried didn't have two thousand dollars worth of gunsmithing done to it. Oh, but I, oh, I oh, okay. And right, and the right. six of them that I own. Mm -hmm. All have been. Uh, that, that makes you a bullshitter, Phil. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll save my target next Sunday so you can see it, Mister Bullshitter. Yeah, bring oh. your target in. I'd like to see that too. Yeah, this is yeah. really. Yeah, this is. Yeah. 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 Now we're at. Why don't we all, all, all? Why don't all we guys whip out our dicks at the same time and you know, see? Hey, uh, I, I, you know, I shoot one target every Sunday, a hundred rounds uh, at an indoor range. Hey. Are you quoting Spacey again? <laughs> yeah. So you know, uh, are, are you are you see, are you trying to are you trying to tell me that a forty-five oh. is an accurate weapon? Yes. Uh, Spacey I likes shoot, his dicks. Uh, and I, I also I, I can well do the done. same. I can do the same <laughs> thing with my officer's ACP, which is a forty-five that has a three and a half inch barrel. Okay. As you know, to my I five find inch all of this boring discussion because, quite frankly. I don't think we should ever wax poetic about something and kill something. And the only reason well, a gun exists a is to kill is Jack. to kill something. Yeah. I, no, I, I think that's a misnomer. No, it doesn't protect you. And it, you're saying you're going to fight a nation? You're going to uprise against a nation? What do you intend to do with that gun? You intend it's to kill people, somebody. You intend yeah. to kill somebody to defend yourself, but you intend to kill somebody. Or to if defend others. If anybody prevented a crime, Trump would have given them a, some kind of medal already. The only one it did was the one down in Texas. How, how long would it take if Phil to I've shoot? Heard. How long would it take if Phil to shoot 450 rounds with your 45? Uh, a long time because it's only in a, a seven-round magazine. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm all for. So, so that's just, why. So that's the point of banning assault weapons with 30-round clips. I, well, I'm all. They've for, already I, banned I, the 30-round. Okay, clips. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So they already banned uh, those. Oh, God. They're, they're banned yeah. in California. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll stop. Except for law enforcement. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, All right. Calm down. Calm small. down. How many states are they banned? Settle. Just one. Settle. Settle. I don't know. Settle. I only so, know about California. It, it doesn't help anybody else in any other state if you people don't want to suck up, step up, and be good people. Hey, I only know the laws in California, and in California they're banned. Well, good for California, but I I know they're not banned where I am. Oh no. Oh. And I'm worried about my ass getting <laughs> shot, not yours. And it should because it's black. And that, so. and that can happen at any Jack. concert. All the words out of my mouth, right? Theater, any Sorry. any place you go. Yeah. Hey, hey Tim, you wanted to ask me a question. What's your question? Uh, it wasn't one of the original duties of the militia in the South to act as slave patrols. That's that was their that was their not only one of their original duties; it was their primary duty. And it wasn't in the Second Amendment. They use the word state. They don't use the word country or nation. That's right. Or individual. They talk about maintain a free state. That was to maintain slavery. That's why we have the Second Amendment. Some uh, people uh, say that. I say we have the Second Amendment to protect the First Amendment. A student of history. And Phil, as far as that's concerned, 
What good is an AR-15, even an AR-16, or a modified it's 15? It's M-16. All right, all right, I'm sorry, an M-16, which is the military version that's fully automatic. Right. What What is the good of that up against an armed personnel carrier? You can't stop them. No, you can't. So, so... So what you but said about it puts, you, it puts you at an equal level. It it's 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 the unknown. It's it the unknown that stops those things. I'll show you what, I'll it's, say, it's, what, it's I'll the tell bad you. guy that tell thinks what, that you're you, unarmed well, and what, he's armed. It, and, I'll, I'll, all right, if you're worried about bad guys coming into your house, you know, and I know, and some of the other people on the panel know that a that a twelve gauge shotgun is the best home protection. I like a 12-gauge shotgun. Now, now, let's, now, now, let's get back to your thing about... Well, I, I like nuclear devices myself, personally, and I want the right to be able to carry one. Right. I want a hand grenade. It, hey, is that a... Is that a uh, with that in your pants, or is that a nuclear bomb in your uh, crotch? No, it's Kevin Spacey. No. Uh, <laughs> yes, Patrick. Patrick and then Jeff. I, I will say this much. For home protection, uh, for the most part, Jack is right. Using a shotgun, and the reason <laughs> that, the, the reason I'll say this is when I went to Hawaii in 2002, it was very close, right after 9/11, and in the in Honolulu airport, there were uh, military all over the place, and they were not carrying M16; they were carrying shotgun, and the reason they carried shotgun. It started. They could. They were in close quarters, mm -hmm. and in close quarter combat, or in situations like that, they wanted to make sure that if they hit their target, they were hitting that target. Okay, Jeff. Plus, it doesn't go as far. Yeah. yeah there's something I, called. Wait, 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 shut up, Phil. I, I, I said Jeff. No. Oh. I want yeah. everybody to take their chance to get an old movie that I always see about once a year. It's Doctor Strange Love. And it'll tell you about the ridiculousness of bombs and guns and killing. And it's stupid. Yep. Hey, and, and look, you know, I mean, you got somebody like ISIS doing it with cars driving down the street. Okay? So, you know, no, anyway, anyway, Phil. There are different missions. Can I go to something what, else? Pat, I, can Pat, I, what, I don't want to. No more. No uh, more. Enough of that topic. Okay. Let's end with a couple of things here, little items that I have that maybe I just want to throw out. Uh, a new person has been uh, a new Hollywood actor, a veteran Hollywood actor, uh, has is the focus of an investigation by Amazon Studios after allegations of sexual harassment have surfaced. Any guesses who this is? Kevin Spacey. No. no. <laughs> Harrison. No. Jeffrey Tambor. Oh. Hmm? He is strong, oh, really? and he's strongly denying the allegations. In the early stages, the probe primarily stems from claims by Tambor's former assistant, Van Barnes, of implied inappropriate behavior on the part of the Emmy, Golden Globe, and SAG Awards winner. Uh, they report that the investigation into the claims by the transgender Barnes, which she made online in a private Facebook post, began earlier this week. Uh, Tambor yeah. says, I am aware of the former disgruntled assistant of mine that has made private posts implying that I act in an improper manner towards her. I adamantly and vehemently reject and deny any and all implication of that allegation, and I have never engaged in any improper behavior towards this person or any other person I have ever worked with. I am appalled and distressed by this baseless allegation, but if true, let's hand it to Jeffrey Tambor for being an equal opportunity molester. You know, you know, he's the first uh, guy to answer the way he on? should have been answered. Uh, he's on Transparent, oh. where he plays a, uh, a, a, a transsexual. You know who's even more transparent who's now? Is yeah. Mother Nature. Mother Nature is the one that made people like this. Yeah. Anyway, and so now you see, I mean, it's getting around now. Now we have uh, an allegation by a transgender. Okay, that's that's that that's getting it's getting all around, and now. We have our first woman to emerge as a molester, and that is Mariah Carey. What? Oh, really? What? Yes. Did she pick on Nick? Uh, Mariah <laughs> Carey, with T uh, TMZ reporting that the pop diva's former security company has threatened to sue her. The guy 
who owns the company, says she consistently humiliated him by referring to him as a Nazi, a skinhead, a KKK member, and a white supremacist. Michael hey, Anello's hold on a second. Michael Anello's lawyer has prepared a draft of a lawsuit claiming his company worked for Mariah from June 2015 to May 2017 and got stiffed on the balance to the tune of $221,000. So he's suing for that, but he's not suing because she called him a Nazi. Uh, the draft lawsuit also makes allegations of sexual harassment claiming she committed sexual acts with the intent that they be viewed by Anello. Uh, Anello claims during the trip... To Cabo San Lucas, Mariah asked him to come to her room to move some luggage, and when he got there, she was wearing a see-through negligee that was open. There are lots of ghosts and monsters. (laughs) (laughs) He says he tried, but he insisted. uh, (laughs) When she removed her panties, that's what he heard. (laughs) Mark got excited. He says he tried leaving, but she insisted he move the luggage. He says he left the room and there was no physical contact. So, but he got to see Mariah's tits. I don't know, but it, it, it's going crazy now. LAPD is investigating an alleged Hollywood pedophilia ring, and along with that, Jennifer Aniston is returning to TV. So that's oh, the pedophilia <laughs> ring is that uh, Corey Heim? Hey. No, by uh, uh, Billman. Oh, Feldman, yeah. yeah. Corey Feldman. Was it for Feldman? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good friends with Heim. Yeah. Yeah. He he's I'm the dead. one that's uh, exposing that supposedly. Yeah. Well, when is the kid from uh, the Brady Bunch going to come forward and talk about uh, the, the woman that uh, starred on the show? He died. Well, he, well, death doesn't stop a good bit of Hollywood gossip. You know, when is he going to come? Well, then let's let, let's go the- let's go back to to um, uh, what's was that her, Bonaducci? What's her name? Uh, who was that actress? Uh, uh, she her sister is a big writer. Uh, and uh, Anderson? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, Anderson is I'm no, not no, from the Brady Bunch. No, old actress back from the fifties and so on. And uh, 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 oh God, I can't remember her name right now. What it? I'm so fucked. Anyway. Um, she worked at 20th, and, and they said, well, has, did anybody ever come on to you during, you know, were you ever harassed? She says, when wasn't I? And then she said, mm. can you name anybody? She said, they're all dead now. And then she looked back and said, Zanuck, which would be Daryl F. Zanuck, who was the head of 20th Century Fox, who we know was one of the big sexual harassers of the time. He'd probably make Harvey look uh, tame by comparison. And by the way, how bad does Cosby look now? Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, that's pretty mild, tame stuff, isn't it? You know, in comparison and then he, he's, he's walking as a, as a little like a little altar boy. I mean, if you everything know, they say I, about I, Harvey I, Weinstein is true, and if everything is coming out on Kevin Spacey is true, the it, Cosby pales by comparison. Yes. Okay, so number one, uh, uh, let's let's do this. Who knew Kevin Spacey was gay? Uh, uh, I did. I did. Everybody did. Hell, I had a I had an ex lover of his uh, at a party of mine when I when I first moved in this apartment house. Yeah, uh, he and was a then comedian. The second point to that, Bill Cosby is is went to trial because he drugged someone. Yeah. He drugged them. Well, at least they were passed out and then didn't have to know what was happening. All these other people had to look at Harvey's horrible body. You know, and his horrible, ugly face. They're not the same, but yes, you're right. Yes. I mean, it it is the same in that it's like you've anesthetized somebody, and I think that anybody who had to have sex with Harvey should have had some kind of anesthetic. Can I I sue for you guys calling me a Nazi and stuff? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Give give it a good try, Phil. (laughs) Anyway, hey, listen. We we, we, we got got to go. We got to go. Phil, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, You're Rob. Right, thank you, Ro- Mark. Thank you, uh, Mike. Ago. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Uh, good night, John Boy. <laughs> good night, Patrick. <laughs> good night. <laughs> and Tony. Uh, to Brian. Mark. Oh, man. Everybody. Hey, just uh, give it a big, uh, big wave goodbye to everybody, okay? So they can see what you look like. Goodbye. And we'll see you again tomorrow night, hopefully. Boy, that was a big panel and a good discussion. 
And uh, we were just uh, moving right along here. Whew, I'm uh, exhausted. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next over most of this same uh, gab net. And then uh, uh, after that is Connections at 1 o'clock in the morning. I'll see you again tomorrow night at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.